Hello everybody and welcome to part 18 of Kerbal Space Program. The journey continues. We start in space with our interplanetary craft, the Galileo, nearing the end of its return journey from its mission to EVE. We're about a day away from Kerbin at this point. Uh, you can just about see Kerbin just above the solar panels here. And our first task for today is to finish bringing this craft home. So we follow the Galileo until it arrives at its encounter with Kerbin, and now we can start planning some manoeuvres. We start with our orbital insertion burn. Our closest approach is at uh, 7,500 kilometres, and we're just going to circularise there and uh, see what we need to do after that. The burn is going to be a little over 800 metres per second of delta V, but uh, the engines are switched over to using monopropellant again, and uh, I forgot to switch them back before I planned this manoeuvre, so... Once again, the burn time indicator is well and truly buggered, and we're relying on guesswork. I take a guess that this burn is going to take us about five minutes, so uh, having switched the engines back over yet again to the correct propellant, having pointed our craft in the correct direction, and having awaited the appropriate moment, we start the first of our manoeuvres. Turns out I overestimated the burn time a little, but it doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get ourselves into some kind of reasonable orbit, and sort of go from there. Having achieved a good orbit, then it's time for us to set our sights on our destination, our space station, the Socrates. So we select that as our target, and our first job is to burn off this quite significant orbital inclination we have. So we set up our plane change manoeuvre. It's nearly 300 metres per second of delta V, and once again the burn time indicator is of absolutely no help. But we burn through that, and now we are set up to perform our rendezvous manoeuvre. I've got a couple of options here. The safe bet would be to drop our orbit down to about a thousand kilometres and proceed from there, but I decide, nah, screw it, let's go straight in for this one. This one's nearly 400 metres per second, so we burn, we make some fine adjustments, and then we follow the Galileo around to periapsis. We line ourselves up for approach. Uh, this time the burn time indicator is at least trying, bless its little cotton socks, but it tells us to start burning far too late, and we shoot past the Socrates and uh, have to have a second attempt at closing the distance, but uh, hey, at least it gave it a go. After a bit more faff then, we do finally find ourselves arriving at the Socrates, and we bring ourselves into dock on one of those purpose-built docking arms. Uh, for this, I do bring up the resources window. I just want to keep an eye on our monopropellant, because... Uh, we don't have a lot. Um, we used quite a lot of it just trying to raise our orbit around Eve, but we were fine in the end. We've got a bit to spare, and we docked ourselves successfully to our new space station. So the Galileo finally returns home after its successful maiden voyage. Uh, we've still got a fair bit to do. We've got to come up and bring the crew home. We've got to sort out the science aboard the Galileo, but for now, its crew of Jebediah, Valentina, Bill and Bob can just relax for a bit and take a well-earned break amongst the relatively spacious surroundings of the Socrates space station. Well, we've given them about half a day to rest and relax, which I'm sure is enough after, what, a year, a year and a half away? Yeah, three hours is fine. I said that we need to go up and fetch the crew and also sort out the science that they've brought home from Eve, uh, and we're going to kill two birds with one stone, so we're blasting off with our brand new space plane. It's had a few more tweaks, I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to need a few more, but uh, it's plenty capable of doing the job we need it to do right now. Corkin Kerman is piloting this one, and he is joined by our science officer, Grados, who will be overseeing the safe return of that science back down to Kerbin. Uh, for the very first time with this craft, we do have a payload in that cargo bay. Only a very small one, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that affects the performance of this space plane. And almost immediately it becomes apparent that it's affecting it surprisingly significantly. Um, we're not getting up to the same speeds at the same stages of our ascent. We run out of rocket fuel, we run out of oxidizer. Before we've circularized, we have to switch to those nuclear engines uh, early. It's not a great worry in the context of today's task, but uh, yeah, it's another sign that this craft isn't quite the finished article just yet. Just to compound that, a little bit later there's a mix-up, which means our closest approach to the space station is only about three kilometres away, uh, so we need to close that distance. I try with the main engines, but since these are effectively open-cycle nuclear engines, the game won't let you burn them pointing towards Kerbin, so um, design revisions are plenty coming, I think. Ultimately, as I said though, not a problem for this mission. We arrive at the space station with plenty of Delta V to spare, and we can get on with doing what needs to be done. 
First of all, with the assistance of some robotic parts, we need to dock the payload in our cargo bay to the station's multi-purpose docking node. This is effectively just a, uh, a dockable probe core and battery, but uh, we'll be needing that a little bit later. With that attached, our crew manoeuvre themselves around to the station's main docking port, where we're going to take delivery of the Galileo's crew and uh, get them settled aboard our SSTO's passenger cabin, and uh, now we just have the science to sort out. Now, the Galileo has two experiment storage containers in its uh, little service bay. Uh, it's got a primary one and one for any repeat experiments. The repeat experiments we're going to leave up here for the science lab to process. Uh, the rest we're going to transfer across to the experiment storage container in our cargo bay so that we can take that back down to Kerbin. So we're nearly ready to head for home, but there's just one last thing we need to take care of. Uh, when we brought that power module up last episode, I accidentally left the docking adapter we used to uh, manoeuvre it attached to the power module, so uh, we're just going to go grab that, uh, take it down, discard it in the atmosphere to burn up, and uh, that will take care of that. So finally, it is time for our Kerbals, all six of them, to head back down to the surface. Um, it's been an interesting mission. The frame rate in and around the space station is starting to drop a little bit. Um, I had some grand plans for that space station, but uh, that frame rate has put a big question mark over about half of them. Anyway, our Kerbal's journey home goes well. Uh, we do have to fire up the jet engines just briefly, but it's not too long before we are making a decent landing on the runway back at the KSC. So returning all those experiments has deposited a very healthy 5,000 science into our account, but what about that probe core we left up at the space station? Well, that docking adapter wasn't the only thing we want to get rid of this episode, especially now that we know the frame rate's starting to suffer. We don't want anything up here that doesn't need to be up here. And uh, right now that means our eyes are set upon the EVE skimmer. That little craft performed its duties well in EVE's upper atmosphere, but uh, we're not going to be skimming anything else for the rest of this series. We're going to be going for full-on landings, so it has outlived its usefulness, and now we're going to dispose of it in the traditional fashion. Tom Kerman is taking a break from his regular duties to pilot that EVE skimmer, and he's going to dock it onto that probe core, and uh, then we're going to use that probe core to pilot the craft down into Kerbin's atmosphere. With the docking complete, Tom Kerman transfers back to the space station, and we can get the EVE skimmer underway. I've given it a little bit of fuel. Uh, with hindsight, I actually gave it far too much, but you know me, I'm always erring on the side of caution. And we follow our little craft down into Kerbin's atmosphere. We go straight in for re-entry, but I'm not actually going to try to get this craft to destroy itself. In fact, I want to see how well it can survive, because uh, the emergency return vehicles we're using at the moment are a little bit old hat, so uh, I'd like to upgrade them to something a little bit more high-tech, probably something that doesn't look a million miles away from, uh, from this EVE skimmer, so I want to see how well this can survive on the way down. The re-entry heating does start to take its toll, we, uh, we lose a few of those RCS blocks, but apart from that, this craft holds up remarkably well. I do worry about it being aerodynamically imbalanced, so I fire up those engines again, primarily just to, uh, just to lose some of that fuel, hopefully rebalance the craft, and then we start to approach the ground. Now this craft has no wings, no parachutes, no landing gear, so it's not going to come off too well from its inevitable meeting with Terra Firma, but... Uh, I'm going to give it a go. I pull up at the last second just to try and get some lifting body effect, uh, slow our descent rate. It works a little bit, we crash into the ground, the craft comes off surprisingly well, and uh, if we'd had any crew on board, they would have survived. Anyway, whilst this has been an interesting experiment, we do have more pressing matters to attend to. Let's get on with it then. We are going to start the refueling of the Galileo, so we are launching our heavy lifting vehicle, the Brunel Mark II. Greyfred Kerman is in command and she is joined by Erison and Grados. And in that fairing we have one of the large 36 tonne fuel tanks full of liquid fuel that we're going to take up and hopefully fill up at least one of the Galileo's fuel tanks. It's going to require at least two more launches, I think. Now, I'm doing these missions to the Galileo in a strategic order. Uh, I want to get as much down as is possible before I start taking any new stuff up or doing anything fiddly that will suffer from a lower frame rate. So uh, we're going to go up, we're going to refuel the Galileo, but we're also going to bring down that service module that up till uh, recently was providing power and radiators and batteries uh, to our fledgling space station. 
As for the craft we're using today, I think this is its first proper mission. I think the only other time we've seen it was during its test flight. So uh, yeah, nice to drag it out the back of the cupboards and um, do something useful with it. I, we will be doing a lot more with this. It'll cut down massively on the amount of refueling launches we need to do. And uh, with the Ptolemy arriving back at Kerman before too long, I imagine it's going to see a fair bit of action. Um, as the craft gets nearer to the space station, the uh, the Delta V on that CSM does start to drop perilously low, but that's mainly because of this huge mass we're carrying on the front there. Once we get all that fuel transferred, we, uh, we do end up with a healthy Delta V margin with which to get home. Arriving at the Socrates, uh, we come into dock. Now we want to get rid of that utility module at the end of this mission, so we're going to dock to that and uh, hope I don't forget it when it comes time to leave. Once we're firmly in place, refueling is a relatively straightforward business. Uh, I do like the way the camera moves as I'm refueling to reflect the uh, changing centre of mass of all of this. Um, the fuel tank we've carried up is the same size as one of the large tanks on the Galileo. And we uh, we fill up the forwardmost tank, we nearly fill up the next tank as well. So uh, two more lifts should be enough to do it, plus the monopropellant and, uh, and that little fuel tank, that fuel oxidizer tank on the rear as well. Just before we leave, one of the emergency return vehicle's tanks isn't quite full. Uh, we've got the monopropellant to spare, so we just top that up. And now it's time for our Kerbals to get underway, remembering, of course, to take that utility module with us. With this utility module disposed of, we have now brought down everything we wanted to bring down from the space station. So uh, now would be an ideal opportunity, as I said, to, uh, to perform any of the more intricate, any of the more involved missions we wanted to, uh, to go up there and perform. As for our Kerbals on their journey home, uh, once again I'm trying to get this command module to land as close to the KSC as I can possibly get it. Um, like a few of our earlier attempts, I do burn a little late, and like those attempts, we overshoot a little bit and end up in the seas just past the KSC, near to the KSC island. So, um, so still work to be done, but uh, I'm sure one of these days we will hit that bullseye. So, with the groundwork sufficiently laid for it, let's get on with our final mission of today. We are blasting off with one of our Mark III shuttles, and uh, the returned crew of the Galileo aside, all of our available Kerbals are aboard. That's uh, Greyfrid, Erison, Grados, and Corkin Kerman. The shuttle is up to its usual tricks on the way up. Um, I think at this rate, we'll probably have a Mark III space plane before I manage to, uh, to iron those little creases out. But uh, I think what I might have to do is sort of lower the uh, lower the gimbling on the engines. That was a suggestion I received in the comments not that long ago. So we might give that a try and uh, see if that's any improvement. In the cargo bay of our shuttle today, we have the latest upgrade for our Ptolemy-class interplanetary craft. It's uh, it's a new engine block. Yes, uh, another one. After the uh, first Juno mission, I upgraded the engine block on the Ptolemy, and then the Galileo was obviously just built with the new engine block. But uh, we're going to upgrade it once again. You see, while those liquid core nuclear engines might not have been any good for our launch vehicles, for our interplanetary craft, they're pretty much ideal. We get a much higher specific impulse, nearly twice as much. They're slightly lighter, they've got slightly more thrust. Uh, we won't have the afterburning mode that the uh, the Lanter engines have, but uh, to be honest, we shouldn't really need it. Arriving at the space station then, we can bring this shuttle into dock, which is made all the more interesting by the fact that this shuttle has a very large wingspan and tail fin, so we have to get the orientation right so we don't hit anything, but... Um, we do finally bring it into dock. It's not the ideal orientation to do uh, this particular mission, but it shouldn't be a huge inconvenience either. We need to juggle some parts about here, so it's time for our space tugs to leap into action. Um, we need to take that existing engine block off, put that somewhere safe, uh, get that new one attached, and then get that old one into the shuttle's cargo bay to be taken down and uh, disposed of in the atmosphere. One of the reasons I'm performing this upgrade is because, uh, well, I have three outstanding objectives for this series, and that's uh, landings on Moho, Eve, and Drez. The Ptolemy class, as they are, only have the range to get to Drez. With this engine upgrade, they should be able to get to Moho as well, which just leaves Eve. Um, I mean, these vehicles can reach Eve, but probably not if they've got to carry a suitable vehicle for a return journey to the surface. I think that's going to require a new vehicle, and we'll probably get going with that as soon as those other two missions are underway. 
you'll notice that that new engine block does contain a couple of extra radiators that weren't on the old one. That's just because um, those liquid core nuclear engines can run very hot. We just want to make sure the Galileo has enough radiator capacity for uh, when it inevitably has to make some of those longer burns. Anyway, with the juggling complete, with our Galileo upgraded and with the spare bits in our cargo bay, it's time for our Kerbals to head for home. So that will be all for today, everybody. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please consider liking, subscribing, following me on Twitter, link down below. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the Galileo is nearly ready to head off again. Just a couple more refueling trips, a new mission vehicle, and it's good to go. So I really should start uh, checking those uh, transfer windows, but that can wait for another day. For now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.